Defendant Juwan Marcellus Cannon appeals as a right his jury trial convictions of carrying a dangerous weapon with unlawful intent, felony possession of a firearm, and two counts of possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony second offense. The trial court sentences the defendant as a fourth habitual offender to 76 months to 20 years in prison for carrying a dangerous weapon with unlawful intent and felony possession and five years imprisonment for each count of felony firearm second offense. Defendant was also charged with one kind of open murder and one kind of felony firearm second offense in connection with the open murder charge. The jury found defendant not guilty of open murder and the corresponding felony firearm charge. Now let's go to the factual background. At approximately 11 p.m. on May 6, 2018, defendant and a group of eight friends drove two cars to Dune Den Street in Detroit, Michigan, so that defendant could have a one-on-one -on -one fight with a man named Jalil. When the group arrived at uh, Dune Den Street, they parked on an adjacent street uh, near Lathmore Street. Defendant J. Wine Casey, Brandon Williams, and Rez exited one of the group's two cars and walked to the corner of Duna Den Street and Lamothe Street. And from now on, we're just going to call it DNL, man. I can't pronounce that. The other friends remained in the car. Defendant Williams and Rez were each carrying a handgun, and Casey was carrying an AK. While standing at the corner, Rez pointed to the west side of Dundee Street, and defendant and Casey opened fire. Shots were returned from the west side of the street. Casey was shot twice in the back and fell to the ground. The group quickly left the area, and Casey ultimately died from his injuries. Defendant argues that there was insufficient evidence to support his four convictions because only the evidence supporting his convictions was the testimony of Carlos Ross and Dante Moody, two of the men who were with the defendant and Casey at Duna Den Street. Defendant argues that Ross and Moody were not credible witnesses and were sufficiently impeached with their prior inconsistent and self-serving statements. We disagree. The evidence at trial showed that defendant left the home on Coyle Street to go fight Jamil. Moody testified that he understood that defendant and Jamil were going to fist fight, but he also testified that defendant left the home on coil with a handgun, kept the handgun in the passenger compartment of his car as he rode to the Dundee Street location, got out the car with the handgun and immediately walked to the corner of Dundin Street and Lamoth Street and began shooting his gun toward the west side of the street as soon as Casey started shooting. This evidence, if believed by the jury, was sufficient to prove that the defendant left Quarrel Street with a dangerous weapon and with the intent to use it unlawfully, thus satisfying the elements of carrying a dangerous weapon with unlawful intent, and that the dangerous weapon was a handgun, thus satisfying the elements of one count of felony firearm. The fact that the defendant possessed a handgun, along with stipulations previously mentioned, satisfied the elements of felony possession and of the second count of felony Firearm. Defendant argues that this evidence is not sufficient to support his conviction because it is based on the testimony of Ross and Moody. Witnesses who are not credible, in essence, defendant urges the court to reject the jury's determination of the witness credibility and to replace it with his own. We declined to do so. The jury was aware that Ross and Moody made inconsistent statements where themselves involved in criminal contact and sought to minimize their roles in events leading to the defendant's convictions. For example, the jury heard Ross recount the details of the shooting at trial, but also heard him uh, impeach with his preliminary examination testimony that he could not remember anything that happened because he had been smoking marijuana before the group had left to the street. The jury also heard that at the time the defendant's trial, Ross was waiting to be sentenced for a larceny of a person conviction and that Moody had originally been charged with second degree murder in the present case, but had pleaded guilty to being accessory after the fact. Further, the jury heard Ross and Moody minimize their involvement in the incident. Ross testified that while everyone in his car had a handgun, he did not. Rather, someone else placed a handgun in the backseat of the car for him to use if he wanted to. Similarly, Moody testified that he never exited the car because he was not feeling well. And when he initially spoke to the police, he was untruthful because he did not want to be involved. Yet the jury also heard from forensic technicians who found shell cases and locations consistent with Moody's testimony of Ross and Moody. It is the jury's role to determine the credibility of a witness. And like I told you guys time and time again, uh, this is a group of uh, 13 people. Um, They're not that hard to convince, period. They're not that hard to convince. So you got to stay up out of trouble. You think you're going to go get a fair trial? No, especially with a court-appointed lawyer. You out of there. Peace and blessings be